Did you know that 33 to 39% of the body is made up of muscle? In fact, without it, there would be no life, as the heart is the strongest muscle in the body. There are, of course, different types of muscles, but there's no denying their importance to supporting life. Today, we're taking a closer look at why is muscle said to be an endocrine organ and how eating protein can help build lean muscle. For this discussion, I'm joined in studio by Nikki Robertson, nutritional therapist and NLP practitioner. Always good to have you on the couch, Nikki. Thanks for joining us Thank here today. You, Mike. Now, Nikki, it's been said now that the muscle or muscles are part of the endocrine system. First of all, just let's give us a clear picture of the endocrine system. And then why is muscle, which is unexpectedly included in that, included? Mm. So the endocrine system is everything related to your hormones, okay. um, from testosterone and progesterone, estrogen through to insulin. So our muscles, when we think about um, fat loss, um, especially from an estrogen dominance or um, you know, a, a, a hormone balancing point of view, everyone is so focused on fat loss. Yes. But the secret to getting fat loss right and getting it to be a permanent fixture in your life is, in fact, to focus on the opposite. So is to focus on building muscle mass. Okay. okay. So when we have too much body fat, we make too much of the hormones that trigger fat storage. So okay. once you get over fat, you keep getting over fat and it's very hard to switch that off and yes. go in the other direction. Okay. The endocrine switch that enables us or makes us store body fat, the unhealthy body fat, is insulin. Right. And that comes from eating too much glucose. What happens is that the glucose levels in the blood go up, the pancreas makes insulin, eventually it makes so much insulin it shuts down completely, it yes, goes, goes yeah. on strike. So the natural way that the body mediates this is by building muscle mass. Okay. Now, the only way to build muscle mass is to eat protein and drink water. Right. Okay. It is also an organ that is the best indicator of aging well. So okay. when we age well, we don't lose much muscle. And muscle loss or sarcopenia is a natural function of aging. Mm -hmm. As our hormones naturally decline, so testosterone declines sort of from the 30s, mid 30s onwards, mm -hmm. we lose muscle. Yes. But when we lose muscle, we start losing bone density. We also lose muscle ma or, or brain function. So it is a sign of aging. Okay. And if we can maintain muscle mass into our 30s, 40s, 50s and onwards, the effects of aging are far easier to manage. And that yes. means controlling abdominal adiposity, which is accumulation of fat around the midsection, which leads to all sorts of diseases. Mm -hmm. If our muscle mass is relatively high or healthily high, as opposed to body fat, the chance of getting heart disease and cancers and diabetes is far diminished. Okay. So it's really, really important to pay attention to maintaining and growing muscle. And how we do that is what we eat. There's okay. no, well, exercise as well. That comes yes, into yeah, it. Yeah. But first and foremost, it's, it's what we eat. So you've got to, I suppose you've got to give your body the fuel to generate the muscle so that it, it can maintain it. That's it. So, yeah. so many people say, but I exercise and I'm not putting on muscle because mm -hmm. muscle doesn't build, I mean, exercise doesn't build muscle. Yes. Exercise breaks muscle. Uh -huh. It makes you, it helps you to put on muscle mass much more quickly if you give it the right fuel, the okay. right material to do its job. Yes. But muscle is made from protein, from amino acids, and okay. it's made from water. So if yes. you're dehydrated, your muscle mass is going to be that much lower. And, you know, the, it's just frightening unless you're in the sports nutrition industry nobody talks about protein absolutely yeah but sports nutritionists hammer at home because they know that that athlete can't perform won't recover and just won't get to where they need to yeah. be without the right protein and it's important to emphasize the right amount for each person okay there's, there's really no such thing as a high protein diet right. i defy anyone to <laughs> overeat protein there's a high carb diet for yeah. sure it's very easy to go and eat pasta until yes, your absolutely. eyes pop but yeah. no one ever binged on a steak <laughs> so you know to get that level right is tricky you mentioned the right protein mm -hmm. is there a, a better quality protein from animal protein versus um, vegetable protein mm -hmm. how do you keep that balance or, or still achieve the result that you want to and maintain your protein with intake. great difficulty. Okay. So I, I'm speaking as someone who was vegan in my 20s and vegetarian, and I know that I lost muscle so fast, mm. no matter what I did to supplement, it didn't work. And yeah. I see this in the practice. We measure body fat and muscle mass on a, on a, a machine, and my clients who go with vegetarian protein or vegetable protein sources don't put on muscle. Okay. Now, when we look at athletes on TV, on certain documentaries, and you see, oh, they're fine, 
the lengths they go to to get that correct with a nutritionist are extreme and it's okay. just out of reach of the average person. Yeah, yeah. That said, they're also very young. They are naturally making a lot of testosterone. So these okay. soccer players and football players that they interview in their early 20s have got such high testosterone levels anyway they're going to make muscle even if they don't try. So okay. it's not really a good reflection of the general population. Right. Now, Nikki, in terms of, of balance of protein and exercise to, to maintain muscle, because again, if you just sit on the couch and eat protein all day, you're not going to develop any muscle. So no. how do you keep that balance in play? So, you know, the benefits of, of exercise aren't just about burning calories. So when we exercise, especially intense exercise and resistance training, we create... Um, uh, it's, a, it's a modulator in the brain or an enzyme called brain-derived neurotropic factor, which is the counteraction of inflammation. Okay. So it stops the body going into inflammation. That said, people who are over fat, who have body fat of, say, in the 40s, can get more inflamed from exercise. Okay. So we've got to find um, a happy medium for everybody. Again, it's very, very individual. Yes. I would definitely go as far to say um, that exercise is first and foremost for your brain health, okay. and then it's for your body. Um, but that said, many people who are in a, a we get, you get patients in a coma hmm. who waste away. But if yes. they get adequate protein fed, in, fed into the viral tube, um, and that comes in the form of whey protein from, from in most of these cases, they don't lose muscle, which okay. is fascinating. Okay. That someone who is in a coma yeah. can be saved from sarcopenia by getting the right amount of protein. Okay. Because you're then effectively maintaining what's yes. there. It's not starting to break it down, which is what would happen if you didn't get the protein. Exactly. So it's, it's not just the skeletal muscle, which is the biceps and triceps. Yes. I mean, that's the muscle that makes us more metabolically active, okay. which enables us to burn fat at rest. But muscles include, like you said, your heart, mm. your lungs, and all these vital organs, and they're breaking down too. And that is why we age badly. Right. Okay. So everything starts to deteriorate. Absolutely. It's a problem. But now, Nikki, you mentioned whey protein a moment ago. In terms of, like, you see these guys in the gym with their bolt-on muscles and they're drinking their supplementary <laughs> shakes and things like that, is there a point of overdoing it in that way? And also, the quality of those, n those nutritional shakes, is it really good quality or are you mm. pumping yourself with all sorts of other things because of it? So the guys with the Walter muscles aren't just having whey protein. Okay. There's <laughs> a lot that they yeah. are taking in. Whey protein is probably just the last thing on the list. Okay. So you've got manufacturers in any industry who make a really good basic product mm. that does the job and then you've got other manufacturers who tailor it to say the sports market or the okay, bodybuilding right. market and they add other things in. Yeah. I've, you know, it just really depends on who makes it. But okay. whey in its cleanest form is is a superfood. I mean, okay. it was one of the first foods I gave my daughter at yes. six months old, but a clean, clean product. Okay. Okay. And I, I can, you know, it's it's incredible what it does for, immu for your immune system, for your, for your brain health. Okay. It stops you from being hungry, stops yeah. you from craving sugar. There's so many benefits, but it is a food and it comes from food. Yes. Before yeah, it absolutely. gets adulterated. Yeah. All those other so things. I think like with anything, if you, if you are taking any kind of supplementation to know exactly what it is and what the source is um, and know that you're making the best yeah. choice around it as well. Yeah. If there's too many things on that label, don't go there. Yeah. It needs to have very, very few and, and things that you can pronounce is, yes, is yeah. preferable. No numbers yeah. and things like yeah. that that you haven't got a clue about. Mm -hmm. Nikki, thank you so much for that. I think um, definitely a good discussion around protein because it is uh, somewhat controversial, um, but I think the, the benefits far outweigh mm -hmm. Um, anything that we might be worried about on the other side. So thank you so much. Thank you. Wonderful.